In this video you'll learn how to use a multimeter. I'll show you how to measure voltage, current, resistance and continuity. Multimeter is a tool you'll use the most and it can be mastered in no time. These are the two meters I currently have here and to operate them we move the selector switch on the front. It's used to select different measuring modes and in some cases it's even used as a power switch. The first thing you need to do before you start measuring is to connect the probes, so let's see how to do that. One set of probes includes two leads, the black one and the red one. Black is negative and the red is positive. First, connect the negative probe to the COM or common port of the multimeter. Once it's there, you don't have to worry about it again because the black lead always stays connected here. To measure everything except the current, connect the red lead to the port that's labeled with a voltage sign. To measure current, you have to remove the red lead from the voltage port and connect it to the one of the current ports. The smaller meter I have has only one separate port for current, while the bigger one has two of them. On the bigger one, capital A port is for measuring currents up to 20 amps, and the other port is for currents up to 200 milliamps. 200 milliamp port is used for smaller currents, which could be measured with a 20 amp port as well, but lowering the range will give you a more precise reading. When you are done with current, disconnect the red lead from the current port and move it back to the voltage one. Current port has a very low resistance to ground, so if you accidentally connected the probes to a power supply for example, you would short it out and blow up the fuse inside the multimeter. Now let's see how to measure voltage. A red probe stays connected to the voltage port, and by using the selector switch you can go into DC or AC measuring range. Here I have a battery. It's DC and I know that its maximum voltage won't exceed 4.2 volts. My multimeter has a lot of different values in the DC range, and our goal is to select the lowest one that's still higher than the actual voltage we are measuring. In this case that would be the 20 volt range. Connect the negative probe to the minus terminal of the battery and the positive probe goes to the battery plus. If I move the range to a lower setting, the meter won't show anything, and if I move it up, the reading will be less precise. If I switch the leads, the meter will show a negative voltage reading, and that could be useful to determine polarity. Now let's measure this 24 volt power supply. Since 24 volts is larger than the currently selected 20 volt range, I'll move it up to the 200 volt one. While the supply is connected, I'll show you how to measure AC as well. AC voltage can be dangerous, especially the one in your outlet, so please do not recreate this if you are just starting out. Move the selector switch into the AC voltage range and select the lowest one that's still higher than the actual voltage you are measuring. Our European voltage is 240 volts, so 750 volt range would be the right one for this meter. And there is no polarity here, just measure between neutral and live and you'll see the reading on screen. Next thing is the resistance, and this is the easiest one. There is no polarity, so you can connect the probes however you like. Let's move to the resistance range on the multimeter. Our goal is to again select the lowest range while still being higher than the resistance we are measuring. When I have a resistor and I don't know its resistance, I usually go from the highest range all the way down until I get a good measurement. I'll take 5 different resistors and show you how I measure them. The first one is 22 ohms. I can immediately see that the 200 ohm range would be perfect for this situation. So let's select it and see what the meter says, around 21.8. If I go higher and select the 2K range, you can see how we lost precision. The next resistor is 1 kilo ohm, and the best range for it would be the 2K one. Now let's take a 10K resistor and the range would be the 20K one. Next resistor is 47K one. 20 kilo ohm range is too small, so the next one is 2 mega ohms. The last resistor I wanted to measure is 1 mega ohm. The meter stays in the 2 mega ohm range and you can see the reading on the display. For measuring current, we have to choose between AC and DC again. Since AC is dangerous and a much better way to measure it would be with a current clamp, I'm going to skip it altogether. I'll take one LED with a current limiting resistor and connect it to the 5V rail on my power supply. These LEDs usually draw up to 30 milliamps, so I'll use a 200 milliamp port to get a more precise reading. I'll move the selector switch to the 200 milliamp DC range. With voltage and resistance, we connected the meter in parallel with the circuit, but this time we need to connect it in series so that the current passes through the meter. Since the reading is less than 20 milliamps, I'll lower the range to get a better reading. Next, let's measure something with the 20 amp port. Here I have a car lighter which draws around 8 amps. I'll connect it to the 12 volt rail on my power supply and connect the meter in between. This time the 20 amp port is used and the selector switch is set to 20 amp DC. When you are done with current, remember to put the positive probe back to the voltage port so you don't accidentally short something out. 
Now let's see how to test continuity. The positive probe stays in the voltage port and the selector switch goes to the diode or musical symbol like this one. When we touch the probes together, the meter beeps, letting us know that there is continuity. This is very useful when you need to check which wire is connected to which pin on a connector, or when you want to check if something is connected right. You can also use it to check the polarity of a diode. And that's it, those are all main functions every multimeter has. Some multimeters can measure more things than the others, and some even have auto range function which can be very useful. On my meter you can press the hold button to freeze the reading on screen, and it came with a thermocouple so I can even measure temperature with it. If you ever do blow a fuse, it shouldn't be too hard to replace. Thanks for watching till the end. I decided to make a new series where I'll cover simple electronics topics so that I don't have to explain them in the project videos. Leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.